We oh, we're working on this snowblower. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the main issue right now, well, it's in for a little bit of some service because it hasn't been serviced for like years, I guess. And uh, we're looking at about 45 psi for uh, compression. And uh, that's really not that great at all. So let's. Try that again. That's nice and in there. Will my horn even work? You can try it. No, it's not gonna work. Why would the horn work? Uh, I don't know. Why did you ask? Shut up. Ask me. That's more than enough. Not gonna work. We're looking at 45 pounds of compression. That's really not that great. And I did dribble some oil down the cylinder, so that's not an issue. About 45 pounds. That's not great. Then again, the gauge might not be completely accurate, but it's got no oil in it. It's got a very small amount of oil. It's going to be reading now. As you can see just a tiny bit. And I was just pulling that over too. I'm just going to dribble a little bit of fuel down there with the spark plug in it and uh, see if she'll kind of lick off because, uh, you know, that'll kind of tell us if it's good or not if it starts pretty quickly. So let's go kind of get this into the open and then we'll try and start it up. Uh, I got this little syringe I'll use. Get the plug ready to go in it. In the cylinder. Okay. I'm just gonna thread it in by hand. We're not. It's not gonna run for long. I'm just making sure it'll actually start with 45 pounds of compression. Don't know. I don't even know if it has spark. Okay, so that's in it. On this particular mower, it's got a key. Well, it's not really a key, but. That's gonna kill sparks, so that's all the way in. We'll choke it. Actually, no, we won't choke it. And we'll, then it's got a groove right there. So that's gotta be up. Leave it an idle. Let's see if she'll pop for us. All right, well, you guys heard it. So it's got spark. And uh, it seems like it'll run fine with 45 pounds. What I want to do first is just drain this old gas out of here. It doesn't smell like great. It smells a bit stale, so we're going to drain that out. Doesn't have a fuel shut off right there. Could just take the tank right off, which is what I probably will end up doing. Pop these bolts out. And uh, take the tank right off and dump it out. Let's do that. Addition to the lineup. Three A stubby, model number two five five four. Got a couple screwdrivers. Got some pliers.
don't have to take those bolts out. Looks like that'll kind of come right off now. Get this crappy gas out of there. Should probably take a sample of it. Switch it to mode four. Stop it automatically so we don't over tighten those. It's just plastic. And it'll stop for us. Alright, now the gas tank's drained. Now we'll go ahead and pull that plug out again so we don't forget that it's hand loosened. So I'll try this. <laughs> it worked. As you can see, not, not a whole lot of oil in there right now. If anything, so tip it back and see what happens. In front. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, Yeah. Whatever's left in it. I'll go ahead and pull the dipstick, that'll help it flow. Not that, I mean, there's really not much coming out anyway, so. Alright, definitely got one mat in. Nice and sludgy. And normally, before I would do this, I would warm the engine up. Because it'll come out a lot easier, but there's no oil in there at all. I'm gonna pour some fresh oil through the dipstick tube to kind of flush it out almost. Damn, that thing only got 8 horsepower? Damn, that's actually done to 7! It's actually pretty good. I wonder how much the R is at. Go through. So most of the oil's out. I've put a little more through it, and it's coming out mostly clean now. So... In total. Oh. Looks like it's got a little bit of gas in it. Let me smell that. Eh, probably not. If there's gas in the oil, it probably means that there's a leaky needle in seat. So if you take the dipstick out, always give it a little whiff. If you smell anything, like gas, usually the needle in the seat is bad. No, there's no oil in it right now, but before we put oil in it, just so that it doesn't come up and leak anywhere, just while it's out, I'm gonna, we're going to flip it up and service the lower half and grease everything up. Did you do what we did last time? skid plate, take these four bolts out and then we'll pull it down and pull it up and it'll pop right out of there. Oh. On top to go, go. Yo, yo, yo guys, so today we're gonna be doing a RGB car light. LED strip light before and after. They're not in there right now, that's why right before, but after they're gonna be in there. Okay. Alright. You heard it from the guy. I'm gonna open up! Oh, the strip light! Okay, that's your pull. You wanna do this? And no, we're gonna slow blow. I'm gonna not park in you, Brad! I'll grab a screwdriver and pry that away. I want the shit. <laughs> you should have my new pie bars. Yeah, that was gonna be nice right about now. Dude, I can join their group home. Let's just get one of mine. There we go. Hey, Bryce. What? Guess what this came with? Zip ties. Whatever. Should pull out, and that should pull out away. There we go. That means right. freaking three. Yeah. 
Yeah, it looks like we're a bit dry there. camera all right so here we all are with the drive unit this cable's loose we'll adjust that up okay so here's your gear train assembly drive assembly all these gears are super super dry and need glue and that shaft so that's what's called the drive wheel or drive disc right here and it feels good actually, there's no real rough edges. And that right here rides on that wheel, it's rubber mounted. So that's going to move and change your gears. Right there. So that's going to be full speed, that's going to be reverse, and that's going to be neutral right in the middle. And then once you pull the drive down, going to pull that disc up and make contact with that wheel as you can see right there this friction mounted so make sure not to put any grease on that wheel if you're, if you're going to do this so as you can see right there that's about the speed I'm spinning the tires this whole assembly doesn't really move that fast that's about the speed it's going to be moving at all times you can see right, that it's not really spinning that. that fast you don't have to really worry about grease slinging but we'll go ahead and we'll grease all these gears right here and then we'll grease that shaft i'll show you how to do that so now we'll go through a little bit of grease grease that shaft real nice and good just a nice thin coating is all you need just to provide a little bit of a, a little bit of a moisture barrier These usually don't have much grease on them, if anything. So, and that's something why this lower unit was being very loud and noisy was because those gears have zero lube on them at all. But you definitely do not want to get any grease on that drive wheel, or uh, it won't spin. Kind of like leaving the key, the keys out of a drive axle on a lawnmower, like the, it'll just sit there and spin, it's kind of the same idea if you put grease on that shaft, or that wheel, I'm talking this wheel here. So, grease set up. Right now it's in the full speed now, it's all the way in reverse two, there's two reverse gears on this one. That's all you're doing by moving that shifter, is moving that drive wheel. So now we're going to grease some of these gears. I'm going to put that bushing back in. There it is. This one goes on first. Just put it back in there so that I can spin this. Is that the right way? Yo, can I use a electrical tape real quick? Or do you mean like black tape? Yeah. Where is it in the toolbox? Bottom, the bottom box, yeah. Put that in there. Uh, Dick, so we'll definitely want to clean that up. The only one that we could actually get off of there. That 
chi no Slides in there right just like that, gets into that hex. That slid back on, it'll slide nice and easy now. Else is grease to clean everything out. Make sure that I clean that drive disc off with the brake cleaner. issue right now this thing is not catching those grooves and what I'm thinking is that that plastic wore off over time so this has to be moved closer so if we can get that doesn't move it's not like these are adjustable or anything like that which we could try that loosen those two up and then I got a Germany After we're done with this price, you want to go to McDonald's and get some nuggets? Look at that! Shit. No way, I wonder oh. if that just came loose. Oops. <clears throat> Wait, so what yeah. happened here? I'll be bobbing in the bridge top. I'll be bobbing in the bridge top. Now it's too tight. Oh, I'm going to go to McDonald's. Oh, I'm going to go to McDonald's. Oh, I'm going to go to McDonald's. What happened there? That was too tight. Is this LED circuit? Not just that. I 
doing that thing was adjustable. I guess it just came loose. See how that moves like that? Yeah. That's fully adjustable that way, that's why. Probably rattled loose over time. Well, that's to compensate for the wear on the plastic, on the plastic, on the plastic part. Look at it, it even works on that little stop now. That's perfect. No welding required. Yeah, the other way would have been a lot more difficult. Now we'll throw some grease on that so that maybe it'll reduce wear on that plastic piece again. Wanna just keep spinning that? Or are you, are you greasing it up? Yeah. Just keep spinning it. Don't worry about what I'm doing. Throw a little bit of grizz on that. A little bit of grizz. I'm so smooth now. Watch this. You want to make your handle here run buttery smooth? Move it forward and just take a little shot. Can you hold it just like that? In the bottom, pull it up a bit. Just like that, hold it just like that. Put it like that. Spin that around a bit. Get it down in there. It'll work in, it should. Let me feel it. Oh, yeah. All right, rags in the bottom. And then you take your fluid film and you go in this little bushing. And that'll just make it work like butter. Now we got that fixed. Now, what's next? That cable's pretty good, but this one's got a lot of slop in it. Let's see if we can adjust that cable by turning that nut right there. Turn that nut. So loosen that up. That should turn, take the slack out of the cable, and then jam it back on. Vice grip. I'm just gonna hold the vice grip on there. Clamp that on with a vice grip. And then go ahead. And snug that nut up there. There. Now all the craps that slops out of that cable. And then fluid film on these little rollers works good too. That joint, there's that joint right there, and this one especially. Oh, yeah, that's what it needed. Then, to make it even quieter, you can take a little bit of grease. Oops. Put it right in this. And those teeth. Just like that. And it'll just 
glide across them. Make it even softer. All right, perfect. One more. All right. So drop the bowl. There's some varnish coming out of there. I'll show you the color of the fuel. That was kind of coming out a little bit yellow. It was yellow word before I mixed it with good gas. And then uh, the bowl gasket is has a rip in it, so we're gonna have to replace that. But um, we blew the blew the main jet out. That's gonna be the most we're gonna go. If we need to pull the carb off, we will. But we're gonna put the plug back in it and see if it'll run. So bring it back. Prime it up a couple times. Sharp ones, choke it. Okay, so if you hear the RPMs there, hunting, that means that the carb is clogged. The idle circuit most likely is clogged, so we're going to have to pull that carb all the way off and clean it. Don't mind me. I don't know why. There we go. Oops. Those babies in there are good. screw over here. Pull the knobs off. I'm just gonna thread that right back into there so I know where that one goes. So here's your choke. 
throttle, and then kill. I could definitely use some lube, that's pretty rough. So we've got a few line on the back. And we've got this line here, which I'm not 100% sure what that would be for. Um, primer. Primer hose here, which is probably leaking. What I want to see is, if, let's just see if we can tell exactly where this is leaking from. Uh, it is leaking some gas. Oh. You see that? Do you guys see that? Leaking, yeah, the bolt. Bowl nuts leaking, that's what I thought. Alright, so we'll part this carb off of here. Alright, so let's get the carb unbolted from the intake manifold, I guess you call that. And then we can disconnect the fuel lines once I get all that off. So I'll have two Phillips screws. And should fall when it's loose. There we go. They're not. So that type of nut with that little split ring on the end. That's called a kep nut. K E P kep nut. If you get it now. Usually when hoses are stuck, twist them. Once you get it twisting, it should pull right off. Oh man, we're really leaking some gas here. Pull that primer hose off. Okay, that's off. Okay, now we've got our governor linkage. line first. My other pliers. I wish I had some of those fuel line pliers. Those things work really good. These pliers usually work good for hose hoses. Governor linkage out, and we're good to go. All right, I'll get you over on the bench. I hate people who put this. Shoot me an offer. I want this off my yard ASAP.
remaining gas out of this. Oh, look at this. I don't know if it'd be a good flip or not. It's kind of pricey. Two thousand? How many miles? What's wrong with it? Oh, 167,000 miles. What's wrong with it? I don't think anything. It's in the Shoda, so it's not far from Pap's Farms. Yeah, I'm gonna find something that needs work though. And it's cheaper. Pull our needle out with the float. There's our needle for our pin. There's our float. There's our needle. So if you can see, it's got that little, holy crap, that little rubber cap on it, and you got to get that off before you can take the jet out. There we go. Alright, we'll go ahead and grab a screwdriver for now. We'll go ahead and, uh, if that's not clear, if that's clogged, I think that might be clogged. That's clogged, that's gonna cause it to have that hunting idle. Then we'll blow through there as well with some compressed air. I saw some crap come out. Can't even take the main jet out of this. It seems to be clear though. I'll blow air through it again, even though I already blew air through it. Usually you can unscrew the main jet from there and uh, clear it out, but Seems like it's clear. I'm gonna put this thing in the parts washer. This thing is nasty. Back, yeah, I'm probably gonna go do that. Take a wire brush. Take a wire brush. Pick a clean strand. Send that through each of the jets. That'll go completely through there. And then a little bit of carb spray. Good. This is why the carb's leaking right there. Bowl gasket. Our bowl nut gasket is uh is bad. Clean that pin up a bit. Get the gunk off of that. Get that needle. Don't hear any fluid in there. If you do hear a little bit of fluid, what you can do is 
submerge it in like water or gas and if you see bubbles then you know that the flow is bad so I'm gonna put the fuel inlet I'm gonna spray a little bit of carb spray make sure we get good flow looks good and I'm not actually gonna blow air through that because there's a Sometimes there's a rubber seat and you can actually blow that seat out of there and I've done that before and then you need a new carb if you do that. Unless you can find a seat for it, but it's not even worth the hassle. Okay, now what we really need to clean is this. Yeah, I saw some crap come out of there. Yep. You guys saw that? It was clogged completely. No fuel was getting in there. That was our problem. That was why it was surging. The idle was surging like that. And the RPMs were doing that. So that was completely clogged. Not these ports, but the port going from here out was clogged. I'll even reinstall the rubber cap on there, why not? Flip it upside down. Alright, and the way you do this is so you're gonna slide that over there like that. And then drop that right into place. slide through there. Alright, so I'm going to blow on it. I'm going to put my mouth up to that and if you can listen. When I lift it up, you can hear the air coming through, so that's good. Hear that? So this carb is right now good except for that gasket, so... gasket actually feels really good it feels nice and pliable so if I remember correctly the drain is going to be right there half inch uh, size. Just go till it bottoms out and like a little bit more right there and let's go. That's it. That's all you need. Alright so this thing's ready to get reinstalled. We'll just put that Where did it go? Uh, it must have been like that. Or no, it went like this.
adjust that, but that should be good. Alright, so this is ready to get reinstalled. First things first, get this fuel line on. Primer hose. We know that works. Oof, a little sticky there. Okay, that's in. Hoses are in. Looks like the gasket just stuck right onto here, so that's good. Deal with that. Oh, you know what? Should probably get the throttle linkage. Forgot that. Whoops. I always do that. It's not fun when that happens, especially when you have everything on, like all the shrouds, and it's just boom. No air. I'm like medium. Snug on. That idle, that RPM hunt, could also be a intake leak. So if this gasket was leaking, it could be that too. Unmetered air entering. All right, that's good there. Move it back. Danger zone. I'm gonna put the key in it so that it'll center itself. Good there. Snug that up. Perfect. Lift up on it while I try and get it in there. Okay, here. Camera's in the way. Snug that up just yet while I get the other one started. Looks like I got that one bracket on the right way. Oof, well maybe not. Never mind. Okay, done. Now we just gotta put our choke levers on. That this piece goes towards the top. It's kind of like a pointer. So you can kind of see what That'll be choke all the way on, choke off. Okay. Throttle lever up in there. And we'll go full choke.
Looks like that idle, uh, that idle RPM could get pushed up a little bit, but um, we fixed the problem. It's an old unit, doesn't run as good as it could, but you know what, it's probably 20 years old. So, you know. So I think I already got air in the tires. Yeah. Surprisingly, the pull starter is broken. Usually those are always broken. And that's just something people never really want to bother to fix. But I'll probably throw a little bit of sea foam in the gas tank just to, you know, clean stuff out. I already cleaned the car, but. Put a sea foam in there. Go. It's just about it. I'm just gonna go and uh, set the feet, set the shoes, make sure the scrapers set good, and I won't bother recording that. So, yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye. All right. So every time there's like sheet metal like this that's bent, I usually take a crescent wrench, and this works really good. Just bend that crap back. Push on it while I torque it back. And that's pretty straight. Pretty good for that. This one. All right, let's get these shoes adjusted now because those are way at the wrong height. Let's scrape her. Definitely needs to be adjusted. So you can see this thing's all in a whack. If you could look, it's gonna be upside down, but there's an air gap in there. That's no good. So most likely this tire was probably flat for a long time and it was just eating away at that side and this side didn't get any wear. So that kind of sucks. Unfortunately, those bolts are worn down so much to the point. I don't know if it's even worth trying to um, reset that scraper blade. I mean, it's pretty worn down. So I think I'm just going to leave it alone because those bolts are going to break if I try and pull them off. So sometimes it's better to leave stuff alone than even try.